Hey guys, just a quick note before we kick off today's video. This will be the last bit of the Forgotten City that I will be uploading here on the channel. I have really loved what I've played so far, and will be playing it for fun in my downtime, but I didn't plan on this being a full playthrough on YouTube. The Forgotten City is an incredibly well-written and crafted mystery, and it's something that I want people to experience for themselves. One thing that I'd be concerned about with playing through the whole game is that it might discourage people from trying it themselves if they learn all the twists, turns, and endings through videos. Which, yeah, I realize that other YouTubers will upload the entire game, but I still want to not add to that myself necessarily. And in the end, my goal with this miniseries has been to hopefully spotlight the game a bit and give people a taste of what to expect. This is a game that I love, not just because it started off as a Skyrim mod, but because it's such a clear labor of love from Nick Pierce and the rest of the team at Modern Storyteller. So while this might be my final video in it, I hope it's not your last experience with The Forgotten City. But now, let's get back to it. Hey Galerius, you might not remember me, but I sure as hell remember you. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and what you're doing with that bow on your back? Imagine if they did make me throw it down the chasm and I couldn't actually hold on to my bow. I'm George and I need you to take care of some things urgently. Oh, sounds serious. I'm listening. Oh, I, I love this. This this right here, this is fantastic. There's so many times in video games that you have the idea of, I wish I could do this, I wish I could tell someone this, and here we are with some of those options, with some of that ability. I need you to stop Fabia from entering the empty shrine and tell the new arrival he'll find what he's looking for in there. Alright, let me see. Stop Fabia going in, but send the new arrival to the empty shrine. Understood. And Yulia's dying, but Lucretia can't help her without some of this silphium. Take some of it, just like, you know, cup into your hands a little bit, and go quickly. Yulia? Oh no. Alright, I can do that. That's it, now go as fast as you can. I'll go, but once I'm done, I'll need you to tell me how you know all of this. Look at him run, look at him go. <laughs> he really is just taking everything I said to heart, and I appreciate his... I guess you would say his faith in me, his immediate you, trust in me that I know what I'm talking about. Hey, you just got here, you literally just stepped out of the shrine of Persephina, and you tell me to take care of these things? Yep, yeah, sure, not gonna ask questions, just gonna go. I like Hilarious. He's a good man. Oh, look, there he is. You can see him in the background. You there. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I couldn't help but notice that fine bow you're carrying. No idea how you managed to get your hands on it, especially in the light of our dear old magistrate's ban, but I'm impressed. And before you ask, no, I wouldn't dream of trying to buy it from you. I have no use for a wooden bow myself. But I would like to propose a joint business venture of sorts. A business venture? Why? What is everyone with the shifty eyes? I don't trust you. I already didn't trust you because I know you're a swindler and a crook, but... Go on. Tell me, do you have any idea how people here end up as golden statues? The statues come to life and fire golden bow arrows to shoot the... Oh, goddamn. I saw bow arrows and that threw me off. The statues come to life and fire golden bow arrows at them. And here I was thinking I was the only one to figure it out. In any case... Supposedly, one or two of those arrows is enough to turn a full-grown man oh, in a garden. Oh god, did you hear that? Now, of course, that is a travesty. A terrible, horrible waste of human life, which has to be stopped. And yet, on the other hand, I can't help but think of a tale told by that Greek fella, Aesop. The goose that laid the golden egg. With the ability to transmute organic matter into gold, one could create infinite wealth. Use your imagination. Golden animals, insects, trees, and plants. The Midas touch without the drawbacks. We are talking riches beyond imagining. And even if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, half of infinite wealth is still infinite. Interesting. But the whole of infinite wealth is more infinite than half of infinite wealth. I think the Golden Goose is meant to be a cautionary tale. Look, I might have skimmed over that one, but don't be so pedantic. Are you interested or not? I'm interested. Excellent. So the first question is, how do we get our hands on one of those golden bows? Now, I have a plan. But first, tell me, 
Are you familiar with the story of the goddess Diana? It is a thing of choosing archaeologists. There really aren't that many actual opportunities to make use of those skills. I've really only encountered a couple lines where it made any difference at all, and even then, I don't know if it really helped me out too, too much. Good. Then none of this should be a surprise to you. Diana is our goddess of the hunt, the moon, and the underworld, depending on who you ask. The one thing priests and poets agree on is that she carried with her a golden bow and a quiver of golden arrows. And it just so happens that there is a shrine of Diana in this very forum with a prominent statue of the goddess herself. And would you like to guess what she's holding in her hand? A golden bow. Precisely. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in that temple staring at it, trying to figure out how to retrieve it without breaking you-know-what. But you want me to steal it? Oh, gods, no. If you tried that, we'd be dead within moments, I'm sure. No, here's what I propose. You give your bow to me, I cover it in a thin layer of gold leaf, and we create a replica of a golden bow. Then you enter the shrine, extinguish the braziers, and under cover of darkness, swap out the fake for the original. It's not theft, exactly. It's more of a... a trade. But make no mistake, this is a dangerous path, and there's no way of knowing where it will lead. But in my experience, all the best adventures begin with a risky first step. Now, you must have questions. Ask away. Imagine if it did break the golden rule, and he starts pleading with the golden statues, like, No, 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 we didn't steal, it was a trade! Like, yeah, try explaining that to them when this, uh... This screws everyone over. Why can't you do it yourself? I'm more of an ideas man, whereas you're obviously the more resourceful and heroic type. I have complete confidence in you. Isn't that extremely dangerous? When Prometheus stole fire from the gods and became a hero to all mankind, do you think he was worried about the danger? Prometheus was also punished for eternity, if I recall correctly. I'm not even an archaeologist, and I know that. Only because he was silly enough to get caught. Alright. So, are you in, partner? I mean... Here's the other thing. <laughs> here's the other thing. I feel like if it does go badly, I don't lose anything. It just resets for me. Alright, I'll do it. I'll do it, but don't ever call me partner. I'm gonna pass. If you don't like action or horror elements, feel free to decline. Which I think it's interesting that it does give you that warning right there. Wonderful. Now, if you'll hand over your bow, I can get started applying a layer of gold leaf. This is a quality weapon. Now, bear with me for a moment. And here we are. A gold leaf bow. Fake golden bow. A composite bow covered in gold leaf. Now I've gone and unlocked the shrine of Diana for you, so as quick as you can, head on inside. Or... It's just at the end of the street on the left. May the gods not watch over you. Or... Here's the other thing I can do. I can run up here and take his normal wooden bow. So now I'll have both the... Fake bow and we're not. I'll have the regular wooden bow as well as the golden bow. Also, where's Galerius? Can I talk to him? Where did he go in all this? I was hoping to catch up with him. He probably went back to Welcome. the farms. Feeling all right? Can we talk about Yulia? Sure. What do you want to know? Oh, does she not know that I? helped with that? Gladly. That's a shame. Thanks again for saving Yulia's life. Oh, there we go. Apollo smiles upon you. Okay, she does know. She knows that I helped. Galerius <laughs> is probably like, listen, the new guy just wants me to help out here. Yeah, this doesn't seem like a bad idea at all. This definitely doesn't seem like a terrible idea. Oh, I gotta reach the bow. I feel like... Yeah, alright. The... Targeting for the bow is not the best. Wait, I saw it for a split second. Hold on, hold on. 
Okay, this is gonna be annoying. Come on! Let me look at the bow. I'm not even looking at the statue, like, I'm looking right at the bow. Come on, game. There we go. Whoop. I don't like that the lights came back on immediately. Is that you, partner? Do you have the bow? <laughs> if only I could say no. Yeah, I have it. Wonderful. Just go ahead and slide it under the door for me and I'll unlock it for you. You locked me in here? A little bit slow, aren't you? Yes, I locked you in. And until you give me my bow, you're gonna stay in there, like Tantalus in Tartarus. How is this not against the golden rule? You said you'd split the riches between the two of us. <laughs> no, technically, I never said that. I said, if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, infinite wealth is still infinite. It's hardly my fault if you can't tell the difference between a hypothetical and a promise now, is it? Goddamn oh, lawyers. Do love a good loophole. Oh, goddamn lawyers. How can I trust you after you double-cross me like this? You're just gonna have to take your chances, I'm afraid. The bow, now. And don't even think about giving me the fake one. I'll recognize my own handiwork. Even if I gave it to you, you'd probably just leave me in here. Forget it. Hmm. I would reconsider my position quickly if I were you. I'm not sure if you noticed, but you're stuck in there with a hornet's nest. And they can be rather aggressive toward intruders. You know, some say it takes 27 hornet stings to kill a man. But I always wondered how anyone could have known that. Let's find out if they were right, shall we? What if I actually had to count all of the, uh... <laughs> what if I had to count all of the attacks or all of the hornet bites? Oh god, yeah, so I can't tell the wooden bow from the regular bow. Nope, that's, that's the golden bow. Okay. The nest. Wait, did that not piss off the hornets? Oh no, it did. Okay, th they don't like that. They don't like that. So yeah, there's not traditional loading screens in the game. There's just a couple segments of the game where you will have a few seconds of loading. But by and large, it's really just one entire zone, which is pretty cool. And then obviously the loading whenever you're in the portal. And it's resetting everything, obviously. It does seem like anything that can be affected by the Golden Bow, or a lot of things that can be affected by the Golden Bow, have one... the little... butterflies above them, and then also it'll kind of show up as white when you're aiming at it. Oh! Look at the scroll nearby. My beloved Galatea, I write this so that one day when we're finally together, you will understand what I've done and why I had to do it. The others will call me mad or a monster, but I don't care what they think. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for you. I'll start at the beginning. Soon after my arrival here, as I walked down a corridor lined with golden statues, I thought I heard a whisper behind me. A rasp of air, as if vocal cords of metal strained to say a word or two. Oh, she heard the whispers too. I tried too. to dismiss the idea, tried to concentrate on my work as the city's medic. But that whoop, 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 whoop. whisper haunted Jesus, all right, I Weeks slipped. Later, in the hall. <laughs> oh, God. Man, oh man, did I slip. Weeks later, in the hallway to the bathhouse, I heard it again and found myself drawn to the statue of a Roman woman wearing a stola. Her face was contorted with anguish and fear, and disturbingly, it was as if she was looking right at me. As I walked past oh. her, I heard that strained whisper again. Because uh, I've and seen the statues back, move their heads. I discovered that even though I had moved, she was still looking oh, I I right into my soul. That was oh. when it dawned on me. This was no statue. This was a woman 
trapped within that golden prison. Naturally, I told the others, but when I could not reproduce the results of my experiment, they would not believe me. But from that moment on, I knew the full horror of this place. Immobilized within these statues are living human beings. It was that day, my love, that my heart broke. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Oh, look at how terrifying they are. I also like that I can just kick them around like it's nothing. Oh, hey! There's someone up there. What if I just shot them right now? I feel like that'd be a terrible idea. Let's You're not do not that. Supposed to be here. <gasps> sure sounds like the same person as the, uh... As in the notes. I've also never heard algae pronounced algae. So that's a first for me. Oh, chest. Well, now we get the. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, not in time. Oh, God. Oh, bad, 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 bad. I. Yeah, I'm dead. I did not. Okay. I can't get out of here, can I? Nope. Okay. I did not do it in time. Oh. Like, I wouldn't consider this a horror, but that's terrifying at least. Oh. Okay. But now we know for sure. Well, now we knew before this that everyone got turned to gold. But now we know that they're not dead. They're still in there somewhere. Which, that is a terrifying fate. That's a really, really dark, grim fate. I love the little thud when you kick him. Oh, I think you can avoid this combat section if you just climb up on everything before they get to you. Wait, and then... Kick? Oh! Oh, it just knocks them the hell out. Sorry. You know, I feel a lot worse about kicking all of them now. Uh, now that I know that they are people. That they were former residents of the city and I'm just going around kicking them around. I feel a little bad for that. I think I have enough arrows. If it's one or two arrows to kill them, and I have 74, I think I should be okay. Whoop, here he comes, here he comes. I mean, by the time I kick them, they're already dead. They're thanking me for freeing them, for relieving them of this cursed fate. Whoop. Oh, did he already see me? Okay, he already saw me. They're a little generous with what counts as freezing them because a couple of them were definitely not even in the algae and they still froze. Which, I mean, it's also not meant to be a combat-focused game. So giving a little bit of leniency is probably the smart way to do it, or at least the fair way of doing it.
My beloved Galatea, after I learned the terrible truth about the golden statues, I wandered the city as if in a nightmare. What must life be like for these poor souls, entombed in gold, but kept alive somehow? Trapped in their own personal Tartarus, consigned to eternal torment, too horrific for any sane mind to comprehend. I tried to offer them what small mercies I could. I began to talk to them, to keep them company. I'd imagine backstories for them, give them names, and tell them of the world, of the histories and stories I'd learned as a child. As the others became more concerned by my charity, oh, that's locked. I sought solitude from them, preferring oh, the go. company of my tormented charges. Discovering a way into the abandoned palace, I began to spend my days walking its halls and sharing with its occupants ancient tales, my mind turning to those of Apollo and Daphne, Perseus and Medusa, and Pygmalion and Galatea. Pygmalion, the sculptor who fell in love with a beautiful statue, and who, praying to Aphrodite for aid, oh, I thought he was going to be able to get out for a sec. That his beloved Galatea had come to life. It was then that I heard you whisper to me, Galatea. Forgive me. I know that is not your real name, just one I have borrowed from a story. But when I turned to look at you, I saw the most exquisitely beautiful woman I have ever known. A little creepy. Your face, forever frozen in a look of haunting sadness. A little Our meeting creepy. gave me a new purpose. To free you from your golden prison, so that I might one day hear you speak, not just whisper your true name to me. So I gathered tools for the long and difficult task ahead, barred the doors to this place, and set to work. Yeah, can we just talk about that for a second? She saw a statue, decided she was in love with them named them and this is where we are now in all of this she's imagined a life imagined a relationship with one of the golden statues like I know it's slim pickings in the city but uh, come on this is your idea of romance this is your idea of love Concerned. Oh, 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 and algae. Did that get all of them? No, it did not. Wait, 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 wait. Here they come. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. There's still one more back there moving around. I see him. All right. And we're good. And we're clear. I will say it is funny just how gold is such a sought-after commodity, and here we are just turning everything to gold all willy-nilly. Just like it's nothing. It's probably the most common mineral, or the most common substance in the city, just because of the golden rule. It's very dark. My beloved Galatea, my attempts at freeing these souls from their golden prisons have not been going to plan. My first oh. charge was a Greek woman who I called Iodami after the Athenian turned to stone by Medusa. Drilling through the gold that encased her, I was vindicated by the discovery that beneath half an inch of gold, which is so rigid it must be some kind of alloy, was living flesh. Ugh. Unfortunately, this golden alloy seems to have fused with her skin. Okay, so removing gold. it exposed the sinew and muscle beneath and appeared to cause oh, her great pain. I guess I can't pain. turn that to gold. At first, I braced myself, expecting that inflicting that already such turned pain that one to would gold. break the golden rule. No, because it's glowing. somehow, it did not. It seems whichever god is Wasted quite a few arrows there, obviously. These poor souls, 
does not care about their suffering at all. They are forsaken. Undeterred, I press on, marking late into the night, attempting to remove the golden layer that encased her as delicately as I could. Yeah, I know that's already cool. I was able oh. to free most of her body, but when I released her from her restraints, her first act was to lunge for my throat, clawing at me with all her strength and those sharp metal talons. Ugh. This was my thanks for trying to save her. Whatever possessed Iodami to attack, she was clearly not a suitable subject for my experiment, and I was forced to lock her inside an isolated wing of the palace and bar the door. As I continued working on others, I could hear her flailing and launching herself at the other side endlessly. Regrettably, my other experiments bore similar results, and after relocating a few times, most of the palace is now too dangerous to work in. Still, as much as my heart aches to know that you're suffering, I cannot risk attempting to ungild you yet. Not until I have perfected a method that will bring you back to me, whole in both mind and body, and ensuring your humanity is preserved. Imagine being Galatea. One day we will be together, even if I have to free every last statue in this god's forsaken place. Imagine being Galatea, and this woman who you don't know finds you, imagines this relationship with you, and then puts all of these people- Oh god, did your head just move? All these people through torment to pursue said assumed made-up relationship. Say she does free you, and you just go, Listen, I like dudes. And she goes, what? And then, you know, tragic story right there. But we are Greek, we are Roman, so tragedy is, you know, accurate. Tragedy is probably what's to be expected. I'm gonna save, because... Oh, yep, yeah, alright. Not terrifying at all. Are you whispering to me through the statues somehow? Me? Who are you? Ooh. Oh, look at how deep the gold goes! You must be Navia. Navia? And you must be the wretched snake who broke into my palace and disturbed my experiments. And, worst of all, look at what you made me do to her. This never would have happened if you just stayed away. You're going to pay for that. And if you attack me, we'll both end up encased in gold. And do you think I care about that? I don't care what happens to me, as long as you get what you deserve. This has nothing to do with me. Liar! I locked and barred the gate. I left a message warning you all to leave me alone. I just wanted to do my experiments in peace for her. And now look at her. You made me turn the most beautiful woman I've ever seen into this. Look at her. She's in agony. You all did I that. Wanted was to spend my last moments with her, to see her beautiful face, to hear her speak freely instead of in those cryptic whispers. But as soon as I began my work, she stopped whispering to me. And now I discover she started whispering to you instead. What's so you're so the jealous special type. about you? So you're the jealous type over a made-up relationship with a statue. It's not just the statue whispering to me. A lot of them do, but it's always the same voice. What do you mean, the same voice? Yeah, they all sound the same. It's like someone else is whispering to me through the statues. Hmm. Yes. I remember when they used to whisper to me. They did sound similar. I just thought it was because all voices sound the same when they whisper. No, they but don't. Now that I think about it, they were all benevolent and seemed to share a common knowledge. But if these bodies are mere conduits for that one voice, then this body is nobody. And 
Everything I've done here was... Yep, projecting your was, feelings onto an wait, inanimate object. I see what you're doing. You're trying to steal her away from me. Were you planning to wait until I'd done all the hard work, then swoop in? Is that it? That's crazy talk. Don't tell a crazy person that's crazy talk. That's how you get stabbed. No, I swear. Liar. You tried to steal her away from me, and now look what you made me do. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't peel you too. Well, for one, I'm not made of gold. I ended up here by accident. All I want to do is leave. What? What are you talking about? I got trapped in the tunnels under the city and came up inside the palace. Wait. So you're saying you weren't coming for us? <laughs> I wasn't planning to kill you, but then I saw what you've done. Which, that's the thing. So are the lights tied to the golden rule? Are the fires tied to the golden rule as long as the fires are on whatever force there is can see what we're doing? But I haven't seen any of the golden statues with the bows in here. Or at least, not that I noticed, at least. I never had any intention of hurting you. So I did all this. I ruined her. For nothing. Yeah. Oh God, I feel sick. I am. I can't bear the thought of her being like this. And in so much pain. It's the air coming into contact with her flesh. It's agonizing for them. But the only way to fix it will be to break the golden rule and let it run its course. At least that way she'd be golden again and we'd be together. All it would take is one little cut. You know, I'm really glad you're not the medic anymore. <laughs> I can't undo this. I'd be only too happy to imprison you in gold. Oh. Would that break the golden rule if she asked me to do it? I guess, I mean, I'm still killing her, so... Yes, but... Once again, argue with the statues over the semantics. Like, no, 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 I, I put her out of her misery. It's not murder. But let's see how they respond to that. Let's see how they react to that. I can't undo this. Wait, no, I can't undo this. Sorry. It's too late. There's nothing you can do. I have to do this. I'm sorry. I can cover her in gold again. I can wind back time and make it so that I never came in here. <gasps> what? Do I well, if I say that, I feel like she'll still attack me or want me to attack her. I'm curious, though. What? Wind back time? What are you talking about? I just want to tell people that I'm a time traveler. I'm reliving the same day over and over again. What? How is that possible? I just need to get back to the Shrine of Persepina. The goddess of the cycle of life and renewal, of course. But I'm confused. If you've harnessed the secrets of the gods, why tell me? Because you're still threatening me. Because you'll never remember this conversation. I see. Well, I'll trust you to honor our bargain. But if you don't, mark my words. I'll break the golden rule and kill you and everyone else in this city. As a quid pro quo, here is the only thing of value I have left. The key to the chest in the Shrine of Apollo. There should be something in there that's useful to Lucretia. Oh, thank you. Now, please leave. The door here leads out onto the palace balcony. You should be able to make your way down from there. Goodbye. Go. And never return. Until the next cycle, right? And then I'll be back. What? Are you still here? I'm leaving. Leave me alone. I was looking around your room is all. The reflection in the game. The reflections and the reflection maps in this game are absolutely stunning and I love them. I just want to talk to Galerius still. I got a couple loose ends here, if nothing else. I have the key. Can I just give that to her, or should I just open it up myself? 
Hi, excuse me, I'm looking for the chest. Wherever that is. Here it is. Oh! Treatment notes. The treatment for rheumatism is willow bark. Does someone have rheumatism? Feeling alright? Oh, can I not give it to her? Maybe not. That's a shame. Thanks again for saving. I I thought there was gonna be something for her. Maybe it comes up later. Maybe it's part of another quest. Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and it worked. How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know everyone and exactly what's about to happen to them? I'm reliving the same day over and over again. Uh, you're toying with me, right? Wait, you're not kidding, are you? That's the only way you could have known. You're a bit like... Oh, what was his name? Sisyphus. Yeah, that's the one. Old King Sisyphus. Like Sisyphus? How so? Once again, archaeologists should be able to help me out here. Sisyphus was a Greek king a long time ago. For daring to think he could outsmart the gods, he was given a terrible punishment. He was forced to push a great boulder up to the top of a hill. Only, just as it reached the top, it would roll all the way back down to the bottom. Forcing him to start over and over and over again. For all eternity. Just like you. Actually, now that I think about it, there are a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. Tantalus was made to grasp at fruit on a tree he could never quite reach. The Bellides had to keep fetching water in a sieve. Oh, and Ixion was strapped to a wheel going round and round forever. But, on the bright side, at least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. Anyway, I don't know which god you managed to upset to get yourself into this position, friend, but you seem all right to me. So, I'll tell you what. I'll keep doing whatever I can to help you. And you just focus on finding a way to break the cycle you're in. Thanks, Galerius. You're a good man. Oh, that's kind of you to say. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Although, it's not as if I'll remember this next time we talk anyway, right? <laughs> oh, and if our conversations ever start to annoy you, just tell me you're busy. I know when I'm not wanted. May fortune smile on you, friend. Whatever's in that great temple up there on the bluff, I bet it's worth a... Oh, oh, hello there, partner. I, um, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I think there might have been some, uh, confusion about my little practical joke earlier. You see, my plan was to give you a little fright. You know, like two friends joking around at the Saturnalia, and then, surprise, I'd open the door. <laughs> of course. It, you were gone. I don't believe you. Partner, I swear, this is just a misunderstanding. Look... Why don't you keep our bow as compensation? Our bow? You mean my bow? Don't worry, I am keeping it. Fine, fine. It's a credit to you that you're able to see the humor in all of this. Now, can I help you with something? I never said I saw the humor. Very well. Another time. You know, a lesser man... A lesser man would do it. Oh, is he not scared at all? Is he not worried at all? Really? Doesn't react. Whatsoever. What if I just shot, like, next to him as a warning shot? <gasps> oh, look at that! Yeah! Even things not glowing, it'll turn to gold. Oh my god, wait. <gasps> oh, that's cool. You, uh, you want a gold painting? Wait, 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 wait. What do we have in his store? I'm gonna make your statue gold. Oh, not the statue. I'm gonna turn... <laughs> I just turned his shopping list to gold. Oh, man. This is so dark. It's like, they just leave the statues of the dead people in their homes, in their shops, and everything. Man, oh man. 
That's real upsetting. That's so, so depressing. You know what? Have a nice life. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one.